This is a CBS 4 News update. Good morning, I'm Francis Wang. A two-year-old Port St. Lucie boy remains in critical condition after he was shot in the head. The shooting happened late Friday night at a condo. No word on what led up to him being shot, but Port St. Lucie police are looking for a man who was there. A Palmetto Bay family is thankfully alive after escaping a house fire. Fire rescue responded to a home near Southwest 97th Avenue and 183rd Street in Miami-Dade. When they arrived, they found heavy smoke in the kitchen. We're told crews extinguished the flames and prevented it from spreading into other areas of the home. Firefighters also rescued the family dog. No one was hurt, caused the fire under investigation. Local leaders participated in a bike ride meant to end vaccine hesitancy among communities of color in South Florida. One of the participants was Miami-Dade County Mayor Daniela Levine Cava. She was joined by multiple state reps. The group gathered in Overtown and spent several hours riding through neighborhoods. Their goal is to raise awareness about the benefits of the vaccine and to educate those who still might have questions about its safety. Well, someone in Florida has no idea they're waking up a millionaire. The Florida Lottery tweeted out this reminder to check your tickets. The winning $286 million jackpot from June 5th remains unclaimed. The lucky ticket was purchased in Jacksonville. PowerPoint Powerball jackpot. Powerball jackpot winners have 180 days to come forward and now even more tickets left unclaimed. The deadline for five lotto winners is tomorrow. These tickets range from $45,000 to $111,000. Now, CBS4 weather. All right, South Florida, we start off the new work week with rain and thunderstorms. So it's an unsettled pattern, but things are changing and leading to a drier end of the week. First up, let's talk about this Monday. We start off the day with showers and thunderstorms pushing in from the southwest towards the northeast as we're under a southwest flow because of a drop of low pressure to the north of us. Atlantic high kind of sagging to the south and east of us, and so the general fl flow remains out of the southwest. Now, as we continue this pattern, what's going to happen is that moisture will be drawn in from the Caribbean, but also the Gulf of Mexico. And in the Bay of Campeche, there's this area. It's a disturbance that we're watching for the possible development of a, a tropical depression later on this week. This is not a threat to South Florida. However, that flow I mentioned out of Southwest tends to grab a bit of that tropical moisture and pushes it over us. Now let's talk about the tropical outlook. So here's a look at infrared satellite as of 8 a.m. National Hurricane Center also added a new area. It's a strong tropical wave that just exited the coast of Africa, so it's really far away over the eastern Atlantic and it has a low chance for development. Now you see this one in red. It is a non tropical low that will most likely transition to a tropical depression, maybe even a tropical storm as early as Monday night or even early but this is not a threat to the U.S. It is, as it is expected to move away towards the northeast and eventually once it gets into the northern Atlantic later on by midweek, it's moving over cooler water. So that ends the opportunity for further development. And then the one in ba the Bay of Campeche, I mentioned that this one already. So this is a slow mover, but eventually it will start to move towards the north and there's a threat that it could become a tropical depression and the threat for heavy rainfall, not just for Central America, but possibly the Gulf Coast. Not a threat for us. Also, drier air is coming our way. What you just saw was Saharan dust that's headed here by midweek, but most likely Friday into the weekend. That's when we expect lower rain chances. For now, we're keeping those rain chances intact through midweek. Jennifer, thank you. That's our news update for now. You can always find us on CBSMiami.com and CBS4 News at 5, 6, 7, and 11 for all of today's important headlines.